Hey you guys, it's Stacy Sherelle. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, for being on my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Um, before we get started, I'm gonna put some blog posts and some YouTube videos that I created that will really tie this message together and it's gonna come straight from my heart. So they'll be in the description box below so you can just, you know, watch after this or read after this i don't know about you but i love you know sometimes when i'm low or i need peace like i love i thank god for youtube like minute um sermons just get in my spirit and they just bless me greatly and yeah so you guys right now i'm on a walk right we're in a time of social distancing it's crazy how there's a a new word just just made now and i want you to tell you that the, the path of forgiveness it's a path just like i'm on this path it's a walk it's not a sprint it's not a jog it is a walk and look at me i'm going slow i'm not rushing i'm just chilling because especially when it's a deep hurt it's hard to forgive somebody you know like when people hurt you, it really screws you up and messes you up. And and even we have hurts from our childhood or people what people did to us. And sometimes what people didn't do, maybe people favored your sister over you or you were always bullied or picked on or you were your parents to give you enough attention or your maybe your dad or your mom have left you. Whatever it is, like man, Especially childhood wounds, you know, because we're that's the time where we're supposed to be so innocent. And ultimately, the child like mine, not saying that we're immature, that we're incapable, we're not adults, but the child, the a child is so trusting and forgiving and free. But we see younger and younger, Satan tries to tries to steal that innocence, you know and makes you hard and brittle and, and callous. That's why when I read scripture, it talks about the wife of my youth, the wife of my youth. He's referring to Israel as the wife of his youth. We remember, you know, like, he's like, remember when you were just like, I'm paraphrasing, but the scripture talks about, he's like, remember when you were so joyous and youthful, like, and you just followed me wherever I went and you loved being married to me. And then it's like, as time went on, you grew callous. And we see that sometimes in, in mo most marriages, you know, they're newlyweds, the wife is, you know, head over heels for the guy, He'll, she'll do whatever it takes to get him and cater to him. But as time goes on, we become resentful, we become ungrateful. Why? Because sometimes pains happen, things happen, you have unmet expectations or whatever. Maybe your husband isn't as, for, um, he's not giving you roses every day like you thought. And <laughs> post male lady <laughs> or maybe um he didn't maybe he's liking instagram models pictures or maybe he's not loving you how you think you should be loved whatever it is you have to let that go you have to your husband's not your enemy and the people who hurt you are not your enemy yes in the natural they are but we don't look at the natural we look at the spirit room who is behind that who is behind that pain? Who is behind that hurt? And we know that Satan is the culprit. It's Satan. That's what he's made for. That's what he's here for. He's a, he's a liar and a loser, and he's absolutely defeated. But also in the natural, people are, I have to remind myself, people are fallible. People will hurt us, even people we love. That's the most hurtful for, that's the, mo that's the hardest time to forgive when it's people who are close to you, you know? Yeah, strangers may say mean things to you or talk about you, and yeah, that hurts. But sometimes when people, your family or your best friend betrays you, those men cut deep. But that's the power of grace, man. That's what God's teaching me. And when unforgiveness goes, there's anger. If God, for, not like I'm saying, unforgiveness, forgiving someone is a process. It's, I wish, I mean, it could be instantly healed, but most of the times you're going to have to walk that out. And it's a process to forgive, you know, it's a process, but you're not doing it for the other person. I mean, it benefits them, it blesses them, but you're doing it because you're a child of God. And when we have unforgiveness, 
it just blocks everything it, it we become bitter we become resentful and like i said it's okay to acknowledge the hurt it's okay to be sad that's 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 natural but we can't live there you know we have to continue walking and even if we fall even if we stop even if we turn around and go back that's okay as long as we are on the path as long as we are on the path forgiveness is a journey and i'm keep saying that forgiveness is a journey even forgive yourself you may have been on this process of forgiving and maybe you lash out at that person or maybe you think about it and you're like oh god i thought i forgive this person like what is this but forgive yourself give grace to yourself and that's another thing maybe you have done and we all have but specifically maybe you've done something to somebody recently you've hurt them so you lashed out you your anger got the best of you and you just feel so down on yourself you have to extend grace to yourself as far as the east is from the west so has god put our sins he cast them out so if, if we confess it he's faithful and just to forgive us and the thing about christ he went on the cross for all of our sins all of our sins past present and we accept him he is our righteousness it's not what how we can forgive and yes we forgive because that's that's what we need to do and we all know that if you have constant unforgiveness in your heart and you're not obedient you can walk away from your first love people get married all the time and they walk away you can still love that person but you know you're not married anymore but we we want it all don't we? we we want it all we don't want just half of god we don't want a quarter of him we don't even want 99.99 percent of him because that one percent is so powerful we want all of him and i think that we as people deserve all of him because why wouldn't you want all of god and look I mean, I'm on a road, so cars are coming, right? Cars have been passing me, and it seems like interruptions, right? There's going to be sometimes, there's going to be interruptions. Look, a siren. There's going to be interruptions on your path. Sometimes you want it to be all clear and all and easy and peaceful and butterflies and breeze, no rain. But sometimes you're going to get interrupted and the interruption, the, the, the troubles of life. See? Another truck coming. Same truck. You know? <laughs> I think, hold on. I think this is a prophetic lesson. Okay, so the, the mail truck came by, passed me twice. That truck passed me twice. So sometimes you think, sometimes you will be triggered. Sometimes things will bring, maybe you watch a movie, maybe someone sexually assaulted you, took something that was valuable to you. And and you watch a movie or something you get triggered or maybe you have a nightmare and it triggers and it's like god why am i still tormented by this but just don't give up don't give up don't give up and remember the same grace the, the with the measure you meet that measure will be back given back to you and i don't know about you but i've done some crazy mean things in my life and i want i want all of god's grace i want all of his forgiveness i want and in the, in the, in how you judge people is how you will be judged. Yes, and I'm not, and some things is just going to happen to us. But as a whole, I want when God, when something bad happens to me or I mess up, I want God to look at my grace meter and be like, okay, she measured this out. She, she forgave this person. She didn't talk about this person. She did this. She did that. And it, not, it works things, but we do have rewards. And there are principles. And I want... I want, it's kind of like this. We all have access. To, let's say my favorite grocery store is Whole Foods. We all have access to Whole Foods. We have, a, we have unlimited money to go into Whole Foods, right? God given us unlimited money to go to Whole Foods. We can get whatever we want. But if all I get is cake, candy, and soda, and chips, and junk, and all kinds of stuff I don't need versus getting, you know, your proteins, your um, veggies, everything you need, right? So I can't be mad if you're if you're mal, if you're malnourished because you all you got was cake and candy. God gave us the same, God gave us the same opportunity, but we didn't really use it right. You know, it's so the same thing with grace. We 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 have it freely. We can get these things. We have access to the things to nourish us, but it's it's our choice because God won't force us. But you guys, God is so good. Just 
accept his grace because it's ours. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later.